Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finish Foundation. I have been eagerly awaiting the arrival of this foundation and it just came to my doorstep last night. Charlotte describes this foundation as a full coverage foundation with a flawless matte long lasting finish. Now as you may know I am both a biomechanical engineer as well as a registered nurse and I am very passionate about beauty, skincare, hair care, and the ingredients that go into the products that we love. I thoroughly researched, and when I say thoroughly, I mean thoroughly, <laughs> researched every single ingredient Charlotte has put into her new foundation, and I'm going to share my findings with you. You may have noticed that there is a photo of Charlotte and I in my introduction portion of this video, and that's because I have met her twice in Dubai, and she is the most lovely, encouraging, supportive woman. With that being said, this is a completely honest review and I'm going to share with you the ingredients I found in this foundation that I love, but also there are a few that give me concern. So for today's video, we will take a look at the ingredients and then we'll do an application demo and I'm going to finish it off with a mature and dry skincare tip that is going to be a great one for you if you have a little bit of trouble time to time with mattifying foundations. Before we get started, please make sure you subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and you hit that notification bell because when you do, you'll never miss any of my upcoming videos. So let's get right into these ingredients. This portion of the video is going to be a little bit lengthy. If you're not interested in the ingredients, I will put a timestamp in the description box down below so you can head right over to the application demo. I will say though that the ingredients are so important and if you did find this video, perhaps there is a reason, a bigger reason for that for you. And the purpose of me sharing the ingredients is not only to educate my viewers on just what they are actually putting on their bodies, but also to help you become a more informed consumer when you make the choices of what products you are purchasing. The first group of ingredients we're going to take a look at are the silicones. And silicones are derived from silica, and actually sand is silica. And they feel very silky, they're very emollient, and they are not irritating. The first silicone I want to mention is cyclopentasiloxane, and this gives the foundation a very spreadable quality. It's water repellent and it feels very silky. It also does not clog pores, but it can trap dirt, oil, and dead skin cells onto the surface of your skin, which could give you blemishes. The next silicone is PEG10 dimethicone. PEG10 is polyethylene glycol, and this is a thickener and a softener, and it's also a moisture carrier. When you combine the two, it becomes a skin protectant, and the 10 represents the number of units of ethylene glycol in the actual ingredient. This ingredient is very emollient, and it prevents water loss. We also have the mineral silica, and this is very thickening, it's anti-caking, which means it's gonna prevent lumps from forming in the foundation. It has absorbent properties, and it improves the distribution of pigments and cosmetics, and it allows them to have a real even coverage. Silica is actually little spheres, so it improves the spreadability of the formula, but because it is an absorbent ingredient, the downside is it can absorb almost too much moisture and too much oil from the skin and leave you with a very dry feeling. The dimethicone cross polymer is a silicone derivative and it forms a lattice-like structure on the skin. And in this lattice, air can pass through as well as active ingredients, but water cannot. 
So it prevents uh, water loss. And in that sense, it's a hydrating type of silicone. Dimethicone Press Polymer is very skin conditioning, and it's also a texture enhancer. It reduces the tackiness in the formula and is a thickening agent as well. The last silicone is called Triethocoprylsilane. I hope I said that right. And this is an emulsifier. It keeps the oil and water together, and it helps the pigments to form a nice, stable coating and disperse well into the skin, once again giving that really nice even coverage. The next three ingredients are mattifying ingredients, and remember Charlotte did say this is a matte foundation. The first one is isododecacane, and this is a solvent, so that means it breaks down ingredients to form a solution. It's used in a wide variety of cosmetics, skincare, and hair care, and including long wear lipsticks. Now remember, Charlotte did say this is a long wear formula. And it creates a very matte finish on the foundation. It's an emollient, so it's going to help to soften the skin and just make it feel very supple. And it does have a nice weightless feel to it, and it retains moisture. The second mattifying ingredient is Nylon 12, and this is a clay alternative, and it also has a nice silky feel to it, and it aids in shine reduction. This mattifying ingredient is also an absorbent, and it's a texture enhancer, and it doesn't settle into fine lines when you're talking throughout the day, and it helps to create a smooth appearance. This is really important to me because I am 36 years old, and I do find that with some of the heavier foundations, I will start to see them in the lines on my face as I'm talking and smiling and socializing throughout the day. The third mattifying ingredient is aluminum hydroxide, and this is an opacifying agent, which means that it helps to make the foundation more opaque and less clear. And it's also a texture enhancer and an absorbent. All right, now on to the humectants. And remember, humectants are wonderful ingredients that capture moisture from the air and even on top of the skin, and they suck it deep into the skin, really plumping up the skin and reducing those wrinkles and fine lines. The first humectant is Propandiol, and this is also a moisturizer and an emollient, and it's a skin penetration enhancer, which means it helps other ingredients penetrate deeper into the skin. I do want to point out that there is a very low amount of people who do experience an irritation with this ingredient. The next humectant is Phaeodactylum tricornatum extract. I apologize, I had to look down for that one. This is an algae and it also has antioxidant properties in addition to being a humectant. And that is that it helps to repair proteins from UV damage. This one is also very soothing to the skin. The third humectant in this product is menthol PCA. And this is trademarked as air cool, which Charlotte did mention in her description of the ingredients of this product. And this gives the foundation a cooling sensation and it's usually used in aftershaves. It's also a skin conditioner. Okay, let's move on to those antioxidants. The first antioxidant is arginine PCA, and this is an amino acid with antioxidant properties. It's especially known to help prevent the loss of firmness in the skin, and it has a lot of anti-wrinkling benefits. The next antioxidant is tocopherol acetate, and this is a vitamin E, one of my favorite ingredients in skin products. It's very skin smoothing, it's wrinkle reducing, it's moisturizing, and very anti aging. The third antioxidant in this formula is dimethyl isosorbide, and this is a solvent that helps to decrease the thickness in the foundation and to help keep the product in a fluid form and to prevent it going into a cream form. It does have some antioxidant enhancement properties, which is why I did include it in this category. The next ingredient is Replexium, and this is a trademark ingredient, and it consists of two different peptides mixed together. Now, remember that peptides are chains of amino acids that trick our skin into thinking 
the skin has been damaged. So when we apply a product with peptides to our skin, I recently just did a review on the Drunk Elephant Shaba Complex Eye Firming Serum where I went very in depth with these peptides. But when you put the peptide on your skin, you're, it sends a message to your brain that there's some sort of skin damage at that area. Your brain then sends signals back to your cells to start the production of collagen. So you're getting new collagen growth in that area. This is wonderful because it's very rejuvenating and it's going to really help to reduce those fine lines and wrinkles. The two peptides in Replexium are acetyl tetrapeptide 11 and 9. Tetrapeptide 11 it has a Botox-like firming quality to it and it's very anti-wrinkling and skin restoring. Tetrapeptide 9 it synthesizes collagen fibrils, which helps to firm the extracellular matrix, so just our kind of our whole complexion and our skin in general. It increases the skin thickness and the skin density. There also is another trademarked ingredient called Mass Cell Tech One, and this is the ingredient Phytol, and this is a very anti-wrinkle and anti-inflammatory ingredient. It really reduces the redness in the skin and it also has some soothing qualities to it as well. Polysorbate 20 is derived from lauric acid, and lauric acid is the fatty acids from coconut oil. This is a surfactant, so it helps to increase the spreading properties of the foundation, and it's also an emulsifier, so it really disperses the oil into the water. And now on to an ingredient I was really unhappy to see, and that is alcohol, and it's the bad type of alcohol in skincare and cosmetics problems. Now, if alcohol is in the top six to 10 ingredients, that causes a lot of concern, and I was asked several times to review the Pat McGrath foundation that just came out and I wouldn't do it because it had alcohol as the fourth ingredient and I didn't want to spend all that money reviewing a product that I already knew was bad. Now in Charlotte's new foundation, alcohol is a 26 out of 33 ingredients. So it's a much smaller amount. However, it is still there. And alcohol is very appealing to someone with oily skin because it's really going to help uh, give the skin a very matte finish, it feels very weightless, and it's going to just suck up all of that extra oil. However, alcohol is very pro-aging because it's basically destroying the first layer of your skin and your skin surface and is aggravating your skin and irritating it. So alcohol is a big no for me and I really don't like to see it in any of the products that I use. I made an exception for this foundation because it was really towards the bottom of the ingredients list. We're now going to jump into the fragrances which is another set of ingredients I really, really, really don't like to see in my skincare and my cosmetics because they are skin irritants. The first fragrance ingredient that I was really unhappy about is the Parfum fragrance. Now when you see this in your products, keep in mind that this ingredient is an undisclosed mix of chemicals. It can be have hundreds up to thousands of chemicals and the reason why it's undisclosed is because in the cosmetics industry is considered a trade secret by the company so they don't have to tell you exactly what's in it. These can be very irritating to the skin. If you notice when you're putting on your makeup, if you start to have really watery eyes or headaches, migraines, it's probably from the fragrances that are in the cosmetics that you're wearing. There's also an alpha isomethyl ionone, which is a violet scent, benzyl salicylate, which is a floral scent. It does have some UV filter type quality to it. There is citronellol, which is rose scent, and limonene, which is a lemon scent. And a lemonine actually can penetrate the skin. And when you have that combined with alcohol, it's just, it's bad. It's bad for the surface of your skin. There are three preservatives in this foundation. The first one is isomalt, which is antimicrobial, and it's also an emulsifier, and it helps to disperse the active ingredients in the product. The second preservative is sodium dehydroacetate, which is also an antimicrobial. And we have phenyl oxyethanol, which is antibacterial. 
There are three stabilizers in this foundation. The first one is polyglycerol for isosterate, which is both an emulsifier and a stabilizer. It mixes the water with the oil to hold the foundation together and to prevent it from separating. Have you ever seen a foundation that is completely separated? You can see the watery bits and then the more creamy bits and you have to shake it together. That has something to do with the stabilizer, something probably oxidized or spoiled in it. And isosteric acid is a fatty acid with emollient properties and this is what this stabilizer is derived from. The second stabilizer is diceridemonium hectorite. I hope I said that right. This is from a clay mineral and it also helps to prevent the heavier ingredients from sinking to the bottom. It has a little bit of a suspension like quality to it. The last stabilizer is sodium phytate. This is a chelating agent. And what that means is that this ingredient binds with metallic ions in formulas to prevent spoilage and oxidation. And metallic ions can get into the formulas from other ingredients, from the water that's in the foundation, or even from the metallic equipment in the storage containers that the foundation is made in. So those are the ingredients in this foundation. And now we're going to get into the application of the flawless finish foundation. Before we do that, I just want to share with you, I did something a little bit sneaky and I've been wearing the Charlotte Tilbury Light Wonder Foundation during this video so far. This is my absolute favorite foundation on the market. It's wonderful for mature, dry skin, so I just can't wait to see how this airbrush flawless finish is going to compare. I will point out that this foundation does not contain alcohol in it. So let's jump into our application. All right, so I took off all my makeup and I have just my skincare on now. And it's time for us to try out the Flawless Finish Foundation. Now, this foundation retails for $44 and it comes with one fluid ounce, which is 30 milliliters. The bottle is this beautiful glass with Charlotte's signature rose gold top. It's an oval shape, which is a little bit different. And I have to say, aesthetically, I find it very pleasing. Inside, there's a little pump. And for reference, I did buy shade one neutral. So let's pump this out. And when I do smell that fragrance scent that we went over in the ingredients. So I'm going to take just a damp beauty blender and start applying this to my skin. I purposely did not put a primer on my face so we can really just get a feel of what this foundation is like directly on the skin. It is pretty full coverage. Wow. All right, so I'm just looking at my skin right now as I'm putting on this foundation, and this foundation seems like it's a bit too light for me. I'm just going to let it settle for a few minutes and check back in with you. I've let the uh, foundation settle on my skin for a few minutes. It's definitely a shade, or at least half a shade too light for me, which is really shocking because I'm always the lightest shade, and in Charlotte's Light Wonder Foundation, I am shade one. So I assumed I would be shade one here as well. As if we just kind of take the shade aside, just looking at my skin, the foundation looks beautiful on my face. And I can see how so many women would like this, especially women that are just more on the oily or combination side. It does look like a very airbrush flawless finish and there's absolutely no denying that whatsoever. I think my skin's natural luminosity still shows through this foundation. I can see as I'm moving my face just the reflection of the ring light, my natural highlight. So I do like that. I'm going to let this makeup just settle on my face for a while. 
I have some family over, so I'll go downstairs and chit chat a little bit and just sort of see how this wears and if this is gonna be an issue with a few other fine lines I have on my face. I am gonna put on the rest of my makeup because I never wear just foundation anyways. And I'll let you know if I can get this warmed up a little bit and if the foundation oxidizes on me. So I just put on all of my makeup. This is a full face of Charlotte Tilbury. What I like about the foundation is that even though it is full coverage, it doesn't completely disguise my skin. I feel that my skin still looks like skin. It has a very beautiful luminous quality to it. And I think that this foundation would look good if you're going to be in a lot of photos, this would be beautiful foundation to wear if you're getting married or going to some sort of big event. I think this foundation will work much better for anyone with oily to combination skin because of the mattifying properties. What I don't like about the foundation is number one, the fragrance. I can smell it right now as I'm wearing it and I feel that that would compound more and more throughout the day. Also, because I have dry skin and I am 36 years old, I have no Botox, no fillers or anything. So as I'm talking throughout the day and just I just know that this foundation would end up making my skin just look a bit older. It wouldn't look as nice. Just putting on my makeup already, it just seemed like those little lines I have on my face were a bit more magnified by the formula. And also, I just feel right now that my skin feels very tight. It feels the way my face typically feels towards the end of the day with my normal foundation. So with this foundation, I'm already having that feeling and it's only been on my face for an hour. So that's something I'm noticing as well. And I have to attribute that to the fact that there are a lot of mattifying ingredients in this formula. There is alcohol and there's also fragrance. And the fragrance is really bothering me because my eyes are starting to water a bit now and I'm starting to sniff a lot. This leads me to my tip, which is a great tip if you have mature skin or dry skin and you're using a matte foundation. And what you want to do is mix a tiny bit of a facial oil in with the foundation and that's going to give you that real dewy-like quality and that extra zap of moisture your skin probably needs. So I'm going to show you how I do it. This is the Drunk Elephant Virgin Marula Luxury Facial Oil and back home I have have a plastic little plate that I use. I don't have it here today um, in US right now. I do live in Dubai. So I'm just going to put it on the lid of my Kerastase hair mask just for demonstration purposes. So take a pump of the foundation and then put in just one drop or even a half a drop if you can manage of the oil. And what you want to do is to mix it around and it's just going to make that formula a bit more dewy for your skin. So because I already put all my foundation and my makeup on my face, I'm just going to show you this on my hands so you can see the effect it will give. So I just have my Beauty Blender sponge and I'm dipping it into my foundation. And now as I put this on my skin, it already has a much more luminous, shiny quality to it, and it just feels a bit softer. So this is really going to help to just hydrate and nourish my skin as I'm wearing a product that is more on the oil absorbent side. With this tip, you do not have to use the Drunk Elephant facial oil. I've done this before with the Caudalie facial oils, the Josie Moran Argan oil, just any sort of facial oil that you like. Use it with your foundation and you will see a much better results if you have mature or dry skin. So this concludes my review of the Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Finish Foundation. I have to say it really just didn't work for me between the shade being too light and I did just guess my shade based off my previous history with Charlotte's products to the fact that the product contains uh, alcohol and fragrance, which I really don't ever want to put on my skin. And it's just too matte for me. That doesn't mean it won't work for you. And my suggestion to you is to sample it in store when you can and to see if this is a product that will work well with your skin. I have to say it is hard for me to 
to endorse a product that has alcohol in it because alcohol really is just such a pro-aging ingredient. So please keep that in mind when you're making your purchase. Thank you so much for watching and please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and I look forward to seeing you again very soon. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching. Subscribe now to Lauren O'Connell Beauty TV and let's navigate together through the world of beauty.